So you're out hiking, biking, or camping in a fairly remote area, and you need to make an emergency phone call, but you just discovered that your phone is almost dead or completely dead. What do you do? If you happen to be carrying a compact folding solar panel like you see here, which I usually carry, and the sun is out, you can use it to power that phone back up and charge it. But if the sun is low on the horizon, or it's dark out, that solar panel will be totally useless. In the past on my channel, I showed my viewers how they can make their own 5 volt, 12 volt, regulated output, compact, and larger crank generators. Unfortunately, many people do not have access to the parts required to make their own crank generators or lack the skills that are required. In today's video, I'll be showing you a very cool 30 watt rated hand crank generator that you can buy at a very reasonable cost, which would allow you to operate or charge all kinds of portable electronics in the event you have no power. Just like other electronics shown on my channel, I only show my viewers products which meet my standards. You will never see poor quality products shown on my channel just to make a buck like other YouTube channels. The link to this item will be placed in the video description area along with a coupon code to save you some money. Your purchase also supports my channel. Okay, this is the crank generator. Right here, we'll take a closer look at the unit in a minute. On the back side of the crank generator, you can see it also has this strap. And what that's for is to secure the crank generator to a tree or another object that's fixed to make it easier to crank the generator. Included with the unit, you have this DC to DC switching converter. It goes from 3 volts all the way up to 28 volts at a maximum current output of 3 amps. On that converter, you have a few different connections. As you can see right here, you have a USB connection, a mini USB, and you have these two jacks here that are primarily used for 12 volts. The end of the DC to DC converter that goes into the crank generator has this very nice screw-on two-pin connector. Over here is the other end that it screws into. You also have a cable like this that plugs directly into this unit where you get the full current output going to a battery if you wanted to charge a battery. And if you needed to supply voltage at any of these settings, possibly to the battery terminals inside of an electronic device, you'll be able to remove the batteries and connect this to the positive and negative, the spring and the flat terminal, where the battery would go. And this right here would plug directly into one of these. Then you dial up the voltage you want coming out of those alligator clips. Let me push this to the side and give you a closer look at the crank generator. All right, at first glance, you're going to look at this and you're going to say it looks very similar to another unit which is sold. Now the other unit is a very good quality crank generator, but it is priced at almost double the unit you see here and the other crank generator has a 20 watt output and this one has a 30 watt output. The unit appears to have very good construction. This entire arm right here has the handle slide out for more torque when you go to crank under a heavier load and it appears that it's made out of brass with chrome plating. Closer look at it. This piece also pivots nicely. And it slides all the way in. Very, very easy to crank. The only thing when I received mine, there was a little bit of a squeak coming from the handle, a couple of drops of penetrating oil, and that sound has been eliminated. The housing fits right in your hand. Very, very comfortable. Extremely compact. You only have these four screws to open it, and in a little while, I am going to open this unit to show you the internal components. Right over here, if you were to remove this screw, you may be able to modify this by putting a small sprocket to have a wheel turn the crank generator instead of using your hand. What I'm going to do now is give you a demonstration of my cell phone being powered by this crank generator. I'll connect it right up to this one and you'll see it charging. 
and the rotation is very very slow to get this to charge so it's not a lot of cranking to get this to charge up keep in mind this could be used for tablets digital cameras many different types of portable electronics I'm also going to connect it up to this sealed lead acid battery and show you how well it charges this battery up we're going to be doing some current measurements I'm also going to be connecting up this high low beam I think it's a 45 watt and a 90 watt uh, H4 halogen lamp we're going to be connecting to the low beam side which is around in this case I think around three and a half amps and we're going to see how well it powers that up I want to check to see if the rating is accurate because a lot of products online may say 20 watts or 30 watts but we really need to know for sure if that's what the rating is because a lot of them do like to exaggerate so if the product tests good and if it's constructed good I still want you to know if the power output matches what the manufacturer states so we will be doing some current measurements to see if it is accurate I'm going to set this over here to 5 volts there are many different settings on this converter from 3 volts all the way up to 28 so this is very useful if you have something that charges at 19 or 20 volts like a notebook computer if you have electronics operating by USB you would just leave it at the 5 volt setting the DC to DC converter is now plugged into the hand crank generator this is tightened down securely you're going to notice there's also a red LED right here once you start cranking it comes on very easily and the same goes for the switching converter just keep an eye right here and you can see that's on on the end of the cable I plug my USB cable directly into my Samsung phone right over there plugged in I'm going to place this right over here I gotta put it at an angle so you don't have a reflection so let me prop it up on top of this I'm going to zoom in so you can see the charge indicator and I'll be cranking the hand crank generator just outside the view here we go and you can see the charge indicator show up on the phone and you can see I'm cranking very very slowly my reflection on the phone that's all that's required to get the phone to charge now we'll take a little while you see once I stopped it came back on it will take a while to charge up but you do have the ability to operate that phone and charge it now what I'm going to do is I have the digital multimeter set up on a DC voltage auto range I have the adapter with the alligator clips connected to the probes we're going to take a look at all the voltage ranges from 3 up to 28 I'm not sure what the H is we'll have to check that out it might just be the high limit for the entire unit which is probably 28 but we'll check we'll go all the way around to see how accurate the ranges are here we go with 3 volts no matter how fast I go 3.4 alright that's fine let's see what 5 volts is five point six let's see what six is six point five let's see what nine is nine point six and it looks like every single range is adding point six volts so this should be twelve point six well not quite 12.36 let's try 14 14 5 16 16 5 6 let's go up to 18 18 and a half let's put this over to 20 20.56 24 24.48 and let's try 28 
27.4. And what is the H? Let's see. Here we go. It's actually the same thing, 27.4. So you have ranges from 3 volts all the way up to 28. The output voltage is just slightly higher, so 3.4, 5.6, which is no big deal. It's not going to damage anything. Let me connect up my phone over there, put it to 5, just for the hell of it. Let's go back. It's 3, 5, and see if it does drop under a load to 5 volts or close to it. And here we go. That'll pop on, and the voltage should read over here. If I go faster, it should smooth out. There you go. 5.53 five, would be the maximum. So if I go a little slower, 4.85, 4.95. So you can go really slow to get that phone to charge, as you saw earlier. And if you go faster, it won't go any higher than I think 5.53. Five, yeah, that's the maximum. So that's fine. You're not going to damage anything. Now I'm going to connect up the seal lead acid battery. We're going to check the voltage out on that as well as the current. Before I connect up the seal lead acid battery to see how well it charges using the hand crank generator, what I'd like to do first is see what the output is directly off the unit without using the DC to DC converter. So we're going to monitor the voltage here. Over here it's on auto range. I'll spin it as fast as I can and we'll see how high it goes. So when the crank generator is connected without the DC to DC converter, the output is going to be regulated around 28, 28 and a half volts, which means when this is set to 28, this is doing nothing. It's relying on the regulation from the crank generator. When you put it to 24, that's when this converter steps in to reduce the voltage to a regulated 24 volts. So by having that higher voltage, it's going to charge this battery much more quickly. So let me take this and connect it up. Okay. So we're at 12.89. I'm going to hold this just outside the field of view, crank it, and see how long it takes to get that voltage to climb. Here we go. I'm turning it relatively slow. Climbing well. If I go faster, let's see. So you can see that climbs very quickly when you want to charge up one of these batteries. If I put this on the 14 volt range, the maximum output would be 14.5, which is ideal to charge a lead acid battery. The only problem is when charging at 14.5 volts, you don't have that higher voltage pushing current into the battery as fast, so it's not going to climb as quickly as you just saw on the digital multimeter. Try it again. Now I'm going to disconnect this over here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to put this over to amps. there. It's on auto amps. I want to measure the current flowing into the battery while I'm cranking. Let's take a look at that. Okay, that's held on right there. Let's take a look, see what kind of current we have going in. All right, so we went just over two amps of current flowing in. It's a good amount of current for that tiny generator. So if you had this thing right here tied onto a tree branch really tight, you'd be able to just crank away and not hold that in your hand. This also appears to be a weatherproof unit because this right here is a rubber seal. 
I also noticed around here appears to be sealed very well. So if I was to say, I would say this is water resistant but not waterproof. Okay, the next thing I would like to do is see if the current output is what they say it is, around 30 watts. Let me disconnect all this. Okay, what I did now, because it's going to be drawing a lot of current, I have the strap actually around my foot as I'm sitting down filming this video so I could hold the crank generator a lot easier. And while it's attached to my foot, it'll be easy for me to crank it by hand. You're going to look at the current output here. Once I find the maximum current output, the next thing I'm going to do is give you the maximum voltage reading at that current output. Here we go. All right, so we have right around 2.7 amps. Now let's measure the voltage. Let's take this off. Let me repeat the process one more time and see what the voltage is, the maximum voltage. And here we go. So we have around 13 volts. Let's take a look. So we have 13 volts times 2.7 amps and it's actually putting out 35 watts which is a lot of power with the cable connected directly to the crank generator okay the last thing I'm going to do we're gonna open up the housing and take a look at the inside this is what it looks like when the cover with the strap has been removed this is metal possibly aluminum and I looked at this handle up close and it's definitely copper or brass with a chrome plating over it. Over here you have the gasket goes between this and the cover and the generator itself is right here. This part has magnets all the way around the inside edge and underneath this more than likely is a stator with a bunch of windings and as the magnets move around it produces current and the output is more than likely alternating. This circuit here with the capacitors, the small potentiometer that's sealed off so you cannot adjust it. You also have this inductor and there is a five pin, it appears to be a TO220, screwed in to this metal plate using thermal compound. And the purpose of all those components is to regulate the voltage to around 28.5 volts leaving this connector. Let me unscrew the other side so we can take a look at that side. Here you can see where the handle's been removed. So I'm going to take off these four screws and lift the cover off. And this is what it looks like when it's completely taken apart. Over here, let me flip this over. You can see that component over here I was talking about. There's the LED for the power. You have a bunch of diodes. This is your 12 volt DC output leaving the board going out through here to the connector and it appears to be a three phase motor you can see the three wires leaving right here you can see the stator with all the magnets very clearly construction appears to be very well you have bronze bushings all the way around and the gears are made out of metal I hope you enjoyed this video if you did Please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.